Well, today was the uh, first day of uh, spring practice for us, and as I reminded our players, um, it's, it's really um, a progression of, you know, what we do every day. Um, and that progression of what we do every day is, is building on the things that go to being successful. And so there's no scoreboard out in spring practice. You know, there's no winners, there's no losers. Uh, what it's really about is the total development um, of uh, the individual and um, them understanding that uh, you need uh, more than just talent alone um, to win a national championship. So making sure that they clearly understand what this next five, six weeks is about. Uh, it's not a, hey, I won that drill, or, hey, I won this one-on-one um, -on -one matchup. It's really about your total preparation, and it's about how you continue to develop the traits necessary to um, be elite. And, uh, you know, I thought they did a really good job today. Now, everybody's at a different level, but collectively as a team, we couldn't talk in these terms um, last year. We were talking about how to practice. Um, we were talking about, um, you know, not going on one knee during practice, taking your helmet off, um, throwing your helmet. Um, you know, we were talking much more about emotional control. Um, you know, guys trying to figure out, you know, where, where they were and what their place was. So you can imagine from my perspective and, and the coaches, um, it's great when you can go out into a drill and just talk about competing and not about um, whether you won or lost the drill, but whether you used really good technique as a DB at the top of the route. And because you used really good technique and your attention to detail there is, you're going to pick that off when we play X, Y, Z. So uh, that was essentially what today was about, what tomorrow will be about. And, 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 and then we start to get into, okay, right, where are the matchups? You know, where, where do we need to uh, develop somebody as a key backup? Or where do we need to develop a little bit more depth? Maybe where do we need to move a guy? But the next few days is really about that kind of mindset of what spring practice is about and what the objective is in spring practice. Um, so, you know, you could ask me about who looked good and, you know, who did what, and I'll give you the best answers I can. Um, but you can understand the mindset that, that we all have going into this is, you know, how do we get our guys really understanding total preparation and how to prepare physically, how to prepare technically, tactically, and mentally in the spring and then how can they have a better attention to detail? How can they be better focused? How can they have the right attitude? How can they be smart? And, and, and certainly, you know, how can they have a great attitude every day? So I'll shut up and um, open it up to questions. Uh, Coach, just on the spring game format, I hear more and more coaches say as vanilla as that game is, they don't want to put footage out for other teams to look at. How are you dealing with – they want this to be a TV event also, right? So how do you sure. deal, deal with the format this year? Yeah, you, you know, I don't think you're going to throw exotics in there and, and do those kinds of things. But you still – if look, if you can play the game, you want to – do what I just said, right? You want to continue that competition. You still want to be able to put those kids in a position where, you know, they can work on all of those things. Last year was a little bit different. As you know, I try to treat it as a game where we did pregame meal and we did the walk and we did all those things because they had never been involved, nor had I. So I wanted to take that anxiety out of the first game for us. Um, and uh, so, as we go through the spring, you know, we'll have to evaluate what the numbers look like. So you could have a short spring game, but you could have some seven on seven. You could have some individual drills. You could have some of the things where the fans could still be involved in it. Uh, but we'll have to see how that goes. 
Yeah, hey, Coach. Um, Notice that the running back room was a little bit thin out there. Could you update us on what's going on with John and Josh and Armani? Yeah, they're working through uh, the injuries that they suffered. Um, You know, they're out there at practice. Uh, They've been great uh, in terms of their rehab. And, uh, you know, certainly um, Josh is the closest in terms of being able to come back and, um, you know, do some more drill work in the spring. Armani will not be back until camp. Um, and, you know, certainly uh, Trey Hawley is going to get a lot of work, and he did today. Matter of fact, he grabbed me in the hallway. And, you know, and, and typically as a freshman, you can imagine there were some, some errors, and he was, he was looking for Coach Wilson and, you know, wanted to apologize. I was like, just keep showing up. <laughs> just show up every day. You're going to be fine. And uh, he's got a great motor. He's got a great attitude. He's got all the things that you want. It's just the first day, and he's swimming. Coach, um, going into year two for spring ball last year, your first year here, how do you as a head coach feel going into this spring with it being a little bit more quieter this off offseason? Uh, well, I, I think, you know, we always put the – you know, the, the blinders on regardless of what's going on and, and focus on what's important. And, and as I kind of alluded to in, in my opening remarks, what's important is really important for this football team in year two um, as, as we go back into uh, the development of how do we become more consistent. It's everything that I just talked about. So as important all, of all the things that we t- had to do last year, this is equally as important. It's just what's more important this year um, is a little bit different than last year. So it's just a different chapter that we're moving through in the development of the football program. Um, but um, I think we just kind of, you know, have tunnel vision and know that this is what's really crucial and important to us now. Yeah, Brian, the, the way the spring schedule set up, two days practice and then a week off for spring break, is that particularly what you wanted? Is that what the calendar fell? Did you think about maybe starting a week later? Just or did it work out this way where you can evaluate all next week on the two days you practice? So it, it allows us to kick into longer hours with the team. Once you go into spring ball, you're you're able to elongate the hours and have more contact time. So it allowed us more contact time with the team, um, and then it allows you to you know elongate the schedule because you don't have to count these days that we're at break. We also have uh, the Easter break where we don't have to count days. So it just allows us the the ability to spend more time in terms of meeting and contact hours with our football team. So that's kind of the, the, I guess, the the tactic, if you will, in terms of trying to spread it out over a longer period of time. Hey, Coach. um, With Walker Howard transferring, did did that decision sort of of surprise you? And with a guy like Garrett Nussmeyer now, how important is it to sort of maintain a guy who sort of knows your system and and can lead this football team when when Jaden departs after this year? Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, you're ready for everything. Um, You know, you... You, you want to do a great job of retention, and, and sometimes it's it's out of your hands, you know. Um, and, you know, Garrett is, is was out there today, e- even after he's had, um, you know, some corrective surgery. Um, he was out there competing, throwing the football. Um, and, uh, you know, he'll probably be another week or so before he's full go and everything. But, um, yeah, he, I think he's... He's excited, and um, you know I, I think Collins, you know, got a lot of work today. Um, so we've got three quarterbacks that that will get a lot of work in the spring. I think we're in a pretty good place. Coach, can you talk about uh, your three defined future SEC opponents and uh, going to a nine-game schedule? One of the other coaches in the SEC seems to have a problem, and your thoughts on what your, how you your, the draw you received? Yeah, I mean. You know, we, we play all three of those teams. So, for me, it, it just didn't seem to be uh, any different. Um, you know, I expected that it was probably going to be Ole Miss and Alabama and whether it was going to be A&M or Texas or somebody else. Um, you know, it, it just – it's not something that I really thought much about because I wanted to play SEC teams, 
you know, when, that's why I came here. So um, I just think I come from it from a different perspective in that um, I respect all the opponents we play, and um, I think it's important that, you know, we play certain teams. But if we could play all SEC schools, and that was the smart thing, I know it's not the smart thing to do, uh, but I think nine is, is great because it's going to prepare you uh, and your football team um, you know, for what eventually will be in 2024, you know, a, an expanded, you know, playoff field. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, just to follow up real quick on John Emery, when do you expect to have him back? John is focused strictly right now on his academics. And so he's got some um, marks that he has to hit from an academic standpoint um, before we talk about football. Uh, with him, that was the deal uh, with with John is in talking to his family, is that if his primary focus was academics and taking care of his degree, then we would have a conversation about football. And so right now his his focus is is 100% uh, on that. Coach up here, sorry I was late. Uh, you were. You just... I didn't notice you. Thank you. I'll pay the ten dollars. Um... I'm trying to move away from that. <laughs> Your early enrollees, you talked about Ricky. What do you want for them, and, and how have you seen throughout the years early, early enrollees really benefit from that extra time? And then secondly, you're a little thin at a couple of positions. Yes. How, how will you manage that? Okay, let's talk about Ricky. Um, certainly as a quarterback, you benefit greatly just coming in, learning the system. There's so much as a quarterback, as you can imagine, from – just looking to the sideline and picking up the signals. It's, it's like, you know, it's foreign to many. Um, some of the signaling takes a while and, and the preparation of that. So just getting that down in itself. Then I would say, um, you know, being coached and hearing a different voice um, is, is equally uh, as important as you transition into, you know, a, a new system. Um, you know, Coach Sloan is uh, a, a great coach, uh, but it's a different voice. And then finally, um, you know, trying to put it together um, in, in, quite frankly, a faster environment. You know, everything's quicker, everything's faster, quicker decisions. And so from a quarterback standpoint, um, mid-year enrollment um, covers everything from, you know, the, the intellectual development to the physical development in the weight room, you know, putting on the, the proper weight, um, you know, to the mental development and dealing with the ups and downs of transitioning into college life as somebody that should still be in high school, right? And, and so that's really important. We're, we're really thin on the offensive line. And um, so uh, the, the charge will be after today really focusing on um, – uh, shoring up that group. Um, now, we've got guys coming, right? We've got guys that are out, and, you know, and, and I'm not here um, to, to say that we've got an issue with a, a second group. We just have some young guys that are playing right now that um, it's, it's really a, a first time out there. But we've got to shore that group up. If we shore that group up, um, we've got some talented players out there. Um, that's a good question. Um, you know, I, I think that there's a fine line between the both and, and, and we'll have to actually meet on, um, uh, how we navigate the second group, um, because we can't have, you know, guys not blocked, you know, and, and, you know, not having a quality play. So we, we've got to figure that out. It's a good question. Uh, a couple things. Are there any guys, I mean, you signed a lot of guys, transfers of different age and experience. Are there some guys who, if they do what they should be doing, or no doubt about it, guys that are going to help you all this year? Yeah. Uh, and then, as you just mentioned, well, if you could name some of them. As you mentioned, a lot of your backup O-linemen who are older transferred out looking for playing time. Uh, Marlon didn't, Martinez. Can you just shed some light on maybe kind of what his mindset is right now going into another year at LSU? Yeah, you know, we want them to stay. Um, but as you know, there's another transfer portal. So we can't worry about those things. We're going to develop the guys that are on our roster. Uh, we're going to give them the, the, the opportunities that we believe is uh, right for our program. Um, 
He's done a really good job. Um, he's worked hard in the weight room. He's reshaping his body. He's doing the things necessary for him to compete. He's getting first team reps because Charles is out with an injury. So, um, but you know, we won't know until we finish spring ball what his his status is. We hope he's here uh, to stay. Um, you know, as it relates to to players that that are going to make an impact. I mean, I think it's pretty clear that. Um, some of the defensive players that we brought in, um, Ovia Gufu, uh, Omar Spates, I think, um, you know, Jefferson, um, you know, to name a few are going to be guys that are going to be impactful. Uh, I think the depth at the cornerback position, all of them uh, are really talented players. You know, watching one-on-one -on -one today, it, you know, it looked pretty good. Um, you know, there's some things that we'll continue to, to, to evaluate, it's day one, but I, I'm, I'm pretty confident that the transfers that we brought in will make an impact, and in particular on the defensive side of the ball. Aaron Anderson is, is coming back from surgery, so we haven't seen him yet, but you know we know about his story and, and how great of a high school player he was here in the state. If he can carry that onto the field here at LSU, uh, you know, we're penciling him in, you know, obviously um, somewhere. So, uh, yeah, look, you don't know until um, you get into camp and you really get into the nitty gritty of it. But we feel like we've supported our football program with the right people because they have fit in so well over the past few months um, in our, our program itself. And that really is the most important thing. Um, Coach, late last year, do you feel like you got tired on the defensive line and with the volume of defensive linemen you brought in from the transfer portal and whatnot, how comfortable do you feel about playing more guys, less reps, and in and out maybe this year a little bit more? Yeah, Jacques, I, I think it was it, it was in its totality. I think it was corner. I think it was safety. Um, I think it was defensive line. If you look at the SEC game, there was a lot of compressed formations where they were cracking down on our best players and you know, forcing some guys that were, you know, less than 100% to make plays in the run game. Um, and, and so, you know, we, we, ha we had to address that, you know, with depth at the cornerback position, you know, depth at defensive tackle in particular, and, and certainly the safety position. So, um, yeah, it, it was certainly in the tail end of um, November, it was becoming pretty clear that that needed to be addressed. Hey, Ryan, is there, is there any element of, you know, maybe year one with an offense, you're just kind of trying to keep things stable, get things kind of where it's, I don't know, efficient, and then maybe there's an evolution in year two where you, there's more you're trying to do, or, or was last year pretty much kind of what you expect? Um, you know, when you talk about offensive philosophy, you know, there's, there's a line to be drawn about, um, you know, how you look at each play. Right. And, you know, if you look at the NFL, right, I mean, there, there's so much focus and, and effort placed on the singular play in the NFL. Right. There's the huddle and then there's all kinds of motion. And then that play itself is, is just a full commitment to a singular play. And that's why they, you know, run less plays than college. College, sometimes it's like, you know, run, you know, as many plays as you can. And, and so my philosophy and our philosophy is we still want that play to have the quality elements of striking on a, 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 a wide front where it can hit everywhere. And it forces defenses to defend that play. Um, and you have compliments off of it. So I think we look at the singular play more than anything else and, and evaluate it as such. So they have to have compliments. There has to be a way to um, get the defense moving. Um, you want the defense to be able to um, change their eyes with motion and um, make sure that they're a force to communicate. So I really think it's about the singular play philosophically that we're looking at more so than this comprehensive, let's get another play in. Thank you.